And so if we keep going here, uh, let me get rid of this one on the left. Uh, if we go down to pi over two, what's the y value there? Zero. Zero, yeah. Okay. And so the, the three pi over four, we're gonna have to use this other thing again. Do you see how it's it's negative 0 0.707? Yeah. So that's so that's actually negative square root of two over two. So negative square root of two over two in there. And then if you get down to pi, pi the y value is negative one. Okay, so now we're going to do 5 pi over 4. What is the y value there? Um, negative 2, the square root of 2 over 2. Yes, and your instructor expects you to say that or do that. Okay. Okay, so then if we go to 3 pi over 2, that's 0. How about seven pi over four? Any guesses as to what that'll be? No, you can um, see it now. You can see it yeah. now. <laughs> it, it, it repeats, square root of two over two. And then if you get back to uh, two pi, you're back to one. Okay. Now I, I've been filling this in as we as we go. So just look at this screen real quick. Make sure you've got this down before we go into secant. You got it down? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the other screen. Okay, so now we're gonna graph secant. And uh we're not going to graph cosine for the moment, OK? But at 0, what is the secant value at 0? 1. 1. So we're going to, that top right, we'll fill in with 1. So now when x is pi over 4, it does hit the secant curve. And it's 1.414. Believe it or not, that's just the square root of two. Oh. Okay, so it's actually kind of a nice value. Yeah. Okay. But what's going on here at pi over two? Pi over two. So if we start zooming out, well, and we actually zoom in, sorry, the wrong way. The blue looks like it approaches the green, but never touches the green. So it does not exist. It does not exist. So you could say D and E, you can leave it empty, something like that. Okay. Now for three pi over four, you can see it does hit the curve there, but it's minus 1.414. That's minus square root of two. So at pi over two, pi over two is right, I'm sorry, at pi, not pi over two, at pi, it's back to negative one. Okay. Okay, so we'll go to five pi over four now. And you see we hit it. What is the y value there? Negative 1.414. And what is that as a root? It's, it's really two. root two, negative root two. Yes. Okay. Now at three pi over two, does it intersect? Does the green ever hit the blue or the blue hit the green? No. No, so D and E does not exist. 
Okay. So now we'll go to seven pi over four. And that does hit at square root of two. And then the last point is at two pi, which is one. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the other screen, but I want, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, we're gonna do the graphs, but I wanna show you how you could have done this without the graphs, okay? So cosine and secant are related by the following. Secant of X is one over the cosine of X. Okay, so if you take one over each of these values in the left column, you get the right column. So I think you like for the first one, you probably believe me. Okay, one over one, that's one. Okay, but, but what about one over the square root of two over two? Mm. Okay, now there's this this thing that, you know, if you, if you do some SAT prep, uh, you learn that one over A over B equals B over A. You just flip the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so you flip the bottom and you might be saying, well, in my table, it's square root of two. So how does this become the square root of two? Remember the words rationalize. Rationalize means to multiply the top and bottom by the root. Okay, so in the numerator, you get two root two. In the denominator, you get square root of four, which is two. two. So that leads you with two square root two over two. The twos on the outside cancel and you're left with root two. Okay. So every single value in the right column is the reciprocal of the one on the left. Now you're going to say, well, what about the DNE? Well, <clears throat> what is one divided by zero? It's DNE. It does not exist. We just said that earlier in the lesson. You said you cannot divide by, by zero. Yeah. Okay, so okay. the point of this, the point of this exercise that we're doing, sorry, my screen just froze up a bit. The is is that you're gonna you're gonna um, you just need to know cosine to find sine. Okay. But obviously, obviously, it's more more difficult than that. <laughs> that that's the you know <laughs> simplicity of it. Okay, let me go back and grab the uh, the graphs. So you got to do a graph of this. OK, so they want you to graph cosine. So cosine of 0 is 1. And you actually never graph this pi over 4. You, you go right to the pi over 2, which is 0. And then at pi, it's negative one. Three pi over two, you're back to zero. And then two pi, you're back at one. And this is this, the next is kind of the hardest part for the students is, is you're, you have to draw something nice and smooth. And I, I do this all the time. So it's not that hard for me to do it, but you, you want something that has some curvature to it, some aesthetic qualities. Um, please don't draw straight lines between them, okay. make, make an effort. Uh, your, your instructors can tell when you're trying versus like, eh, you know, they're, they're not really. All the, now, the, the other thing here is that it repeats. And we, we'll talk about that if we need to. Um, but, you know, yeah, it, it comes down, it keeps going you know, down, depending on how much room you've got. Okay. Any questions on that? No. Okay. So it says, explain how to locate vertical asymptotes of the graph of g of x equals secant x from the feature graph. OK, let, that's really not written well. Let's go back and look at our graph. OK. So here is, here is uh, in red is cosine and blue is secant. Is that OK? Very clear. Yeah. Now, we noticed that one of the asymptotes was at pi over two. Now, don't look at the secant. I'll get rid of it. What do you notice about that point right there on the red? Where does it cross? Um, pi over two, zero. Right. So it crosses the x-axis. Okay. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so that's that's an asymptote. Let's look for another asymptote. Here's another one, three pi over two. Let's change the color to that. Let's make those black. Let's make them dashed. Ooh, getting really creative <laughs> here. Okay, done. All right, so what do you notice about that dashed line and the red? Where does it cross or where do they intersect? The x-axis. The x-axis. So that's, that's what the question is trying to ask you to, to do. So uh, this is in short, the, the, what, in short what, what you need to know is that the, wherever cosine crosses the x-axis, that corresponds to an asymptote. Okay. And, that, and that's, that is the answer to, to, uh, to this question is... Um, Let me let me grab a snip of it. So uh, wherever cosine of x equals zero, this produces a vertical asymptote. So right. it ends it ends up being at pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on. Okay. So part E asks you to go back and graph um, the um, other function. So we're going to start by graphing the vertical asymptotes. So wherever it crosses the x-axis, that's a vertical asymptote. And then in blue, we'll do the, we'll do the, um, Secant. So it's it's just a U. It's just a U. You don't have to get any more creative than that when you're drawing it. But it cannot cross the red. Okay. So you want something that looks like that. And if you have colored pencils or if you like that, I, I do think it's useful to separate them out by color. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to letter F. Letter F wants all this information all of a sudden about a graph you've never seen before, probably. <laughs> okay, so the period for sine, sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant is two pi. For tangent and cotangent, it's pi. And these are just like definition things you're gonna have to remember. Okay. Period, period is two pi. The period is physically the length until it repeats. Got it. Okay. Uh, so the vertical asymptotes, it's, we already talked about this, it's wherever cosine of X equals zero and we, we were made a list. It's like pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on. Now, you may be asked to write a pattern, like a, a formula for it. I, I'm not going to ask you to do that tonight. Um, if it comes to it, we can look at that next time. OK. <laughs> uh, and, and so the domain has sort of a similar issue here. So let's, let's, let's maybe just hold off on that. The range, we, can actually, we should actually go back to the graph to answer the range. So let's go back and look at this nice graph, um, graphing tool here. And how far down does the blue go? Um, infinite. Negative infinity. But it stops at what's the largest y value on this side? Negative one. Negative one. And then there's all this gap. And then positive one is your next 
uh, y value. And how far up does it go? Infinity. Infinity, good, okay. So now we have to sort of come up with how to explain that. It goes from minus infinity to minus one, but it includes minus one union one comma infinity. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to the graph again. Does this graph ever cross the x-axis? No. No, so there are no zeros. No zeros, none. Okay, now if you're, you're looking at, you're seeing the graph still, right? Uh, just making yeah. sure, yeah. So increasing means it's going up, up and to the right. So it's it's going up into the right in a lot of places, like where I'm clicking with my mouse here at minus two pi comma one to the right of it, it's going up into the right. Similarly, down here, it's also going up into the right, but then it changes to down into the right. Yeah. But but it jumps back to this other one, it goes down into the right, and then it goes up into the right. So I think my guess is your instructor just just sort of grab these because this is actually not a reasonable thing to ask because there's a lot of disjointed um, places for this. But do you, but what, what's important to me is like, do you understand what increasing and decreasing means? I think we talked about that last time with your, with your, um, with our lesson. Yeah, I have a better understanding of it. Okay. This is not the best one to, to try to learn this on. Now, did you already have a test uh, last did. week? How did you do on that? Not great. <laughs> Not great. Okay. All right. So you, I think your dad uh, wants us to meet a couple of times a week. And I, again, I apologize for this, um, what happened tonight, but um, oh, that's fine. we'll keep going through this stuff. Please try to have some material for us. That'll really help to like figure out what to work on and um, go from there. But I think that's probably it for tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we're scheduled for Sunday at I think four o'clock is what I put down. So Okay. I will, I will see you then. See you then. Thanks, Paige. Bye now. Bye.